we are going to talk about the Miami Dolphins. Now, nine and a half is the win total. Odds, of course, by BetUS.com. Go check them out over there. Uh, to go over is even, like plus 100. So you get your money back, plus, like you just double your money. Uh, to go under is minus 130. They are number two. Uh, for the odds in the division, plus 300. To win the AFC is plus 1,600. To make the playoffs, yes is plus 125. No is minus 155. So they are more likely to miss this year. They are projected favorites in eight games. Now remember, the win total is 9.5. Uh, they are projected favorites in eight. And the projected strength of schedule based on the opponent's uh, win totals this year is number 10, the 10th hardest schedule. However, if you look at the schedule, which sets up Fairly well, if you look at it, uh, per all the analytic sites and whatnot, they have the fourth easiest expected schedule. Uh, they've only got one road game between November 1st and December 26th. That is going to help towards the end of the season, I think. The win total for them has gone over in three of the last five years. Obviously, uh, Coach is doing a fantastic job down there. I mean, it just has forever and ever. 2019 was a push. 2017 was an under. But here we go. Uh, the Dolphins played uh, more rookies than any other team in 2020 which I think is why they were comfortable with letting go of a lot of people this offseason. Now, they, they still got to figure out the Xavier Howard situation, all that kind of stuff. But uh, Tua, three offensive linemen, like all those kind of rookies played a lot last year. And I think that will pay dividends this season. The offense drafted Jalen Waddell. They signed Will Fuller. They got injured guys back this year to go along with Devontae Parker on the offense. The offense is going to look completely different. They are going to have weapons. They're going to have guys that can actually stretch the field that can do a lot of things, right? You're not just going to have the one workhorse. The defense led the NFL in EPA from turnovers last year. They forced the most turnovers, but um, they they only were number 24 in opponents' yard per play. That's not a good defense. That is a defense that got lucky with turnovers. Like, yes, you can force turnovers. You can be aggressive and all that, but that that's not a guarantee. So... While the defense did look good as far as keeping scores low and all that, a lot of it should regress back to back to regular this season. Um, they the defense has been overhauled this year, and and like I said, they maybe were not as good as initially thought. Like if you're good at forcing turnovers, that's one thing. I do like this team, but I also think that like it, while it's the fourth easiest expected schedule and they've only got the one road game, you know, in November December, I I've got them going under here, under the nine and a half. I think it's going to take some time for all of these pieces to be able to gel and for everything to go right, especially against the schedule that they're playing. Uh while while they've got only one road game in November December, that does mean September and October are going to be really difficult. And if you get off to a a slow start with a young team, it can be tough to pull out of that. I got them going under. What what say you? Yeah, I got them going under as well. I got this team going <clears throat> nine and eight, um, and that's that's very iffy. That I think the, there's a world where the wheels could come off. I need to see this offense. I need to see what this offense looks like, and if they're limited, I think it's going to be tough. If they're not and they're able to move now, all this. Let me say the same thing I said with the Eagles. Uh, if this is the team that makes the move for Deshaun Watson, because this is where he allegedly wanted to go yes. more than anywhere else, then you throw all this shit away. You yeah. throw all this. If you put Watson behind this football team, then everything goes away. This football team is worlds better than that Eagles team. Like not even close. And and I I just think you just got to throw it all away and assume they're going to make the playoffs they're going to they're going to make a, a hell of a push to win the damn division I, I, you know yeah. now now they're now they're big contenders and you just the numbers going to change drastically if you think there's a world where that might happen you can go get a, go ahead and start getting some tickets on on some overs and things of that nature but um i i would rather wait and see uh if that happens before i was to do that or not but anyway neither here nor there um I think this team is kind of going to wander around 500 for a while. And, and you can't be 500 now with 17 games, but they're going to be in that nine and eight, eight and nine realm until something, something big happens. We either need to see Tua make a, make a step and, and, and perform the way everyone expects him to perform or them make a move 
and get somebody who can do that. Yes. Yes. At no no Fitzpatrick this season. There's nothing to no, bail out to us. That's it. Like, that's the well, I mean, they got Jacoby, but I mean Jacoby and Tua gotta be the same guy right now. Yeah. Right now. Tua could be all worlds better than him. We gotta see it though. We hadn't yes. seen that. That's that's the reason why I don't want to take this over is I need to see Tua in an NFL game look like he knows what's going on. Right. That's it. Like he was still really rusty last year coming off an injury. Like it was kind of amazing that he even played last year. But I still don't know what that meant. Like, is this season really going to be the first season? And if that's the case, is he still getting acclimated to NFL defenses? Like, is he... I, I'm just curious. He's got weapons. You know, you got Jalen Waddle, You got Will Fuller. You got Devontae Parker. You know, God willing, all of those guys stay healthy. You got weapons. You got an offensive line that you can trust. Yep. Uh, okay. You know, let, let's see it. You got defenses that are going to keep you in games. You're not going to be you're not going to be playing from behind all the damn time. Yeah. Okay. And if you are behind, it's a score or two. Like it's not. Yes. It's not going to be big because the defense is going to keep you in them. Like this is the thing. He's got all the benefits of everything he needs. Yes. So so let's see it. Let's see it. But I, as of right now, I, you I know this today. is a team that's in. I know this is a team that's in my division. One of the teams that I love. I really would love to see Watson land here because I think this team could win the Super Bowl. I I tend to agree. I mean, that could be a a Brady to the Bucks situation. I think they go from struggling to make a playoff spot, a wild card spot, to being a Super Bowl contender. That's the difference that Watson brings to this offense. I I do think if Tua comes out and shows, hey, I've been working this entire offseason, I am already gelling with these wide receivers, you know, everything's hunky-dory. I mean, I could see them playing really, really well because it's a really well-coached team. yeah. No, but, it's a good team. It's a really again, good team. like you said, I got to see it first. So we're both going under uh, nine and a half at minus 130, right? Yep. Under nine and a half. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.